for those of you who aren't familiar, this is the Workflow Builder tool. It's a uh, flat, fat client tool that sits on uh, your laptop. And this is the opening screen. We will then do File Open. And we have two choices here. Uh, as you may know, uh, the Oracle workflow is actually stored in the database. But we do have the capability here to save uh, the workflow definition into a flat file on our laptop. So we're going to go ahead here and we're going to select database. So we're going to select the database option and we have to put in the app's username and password and then the instance that we're connecting to. Workflow Builder then opens up and shows us all the workflow processes in the database. This is a big long list so we'll type E to get down to the workflow processes that start with E. Then we'll select the ECO approval. Click the double arrows to the left which will move the ECO approval workflow into the visible column. Then we'll click the OK button. And now we have the ECO approval workflow loaded into Workflow Builder. We'll click on the ECO approval branch, which shows the various components of the workflow. We will focus on the processes branch by clicking on it. And there we see the same four workflow processes that we saw in the uh, engineering change order type form. And here we have the form and the processes in Workflow Builder side by side just to uh, demonstrate that. So this is the seated standard approval process that Oracle delivers. And it starts with the get ECO attributes function, which retrieves the fields off the ECO header for use in the workflow. Then we have the standard approval notification, which sends out a notification to everyone on the approval list. Again, that was uh, specified in the ECO uh, header. And what you'll find out in subsequent slides is that this uh, process uh, does not have a voting method. And so therefore, the first person who uh, votes wins, which is not a process that's worked in any implementation I've ever been involved in. If we follow the approved branch, we will then set the uh, MRP flag to active, which lets MRP start to plan uh, for this change. And it will then set the ECO approval status to approved. One of the common requests on this is that we will send a notification out to interested parties that the ECO has been approved. And then we'll go down the reject path and see that the MRP active flag is set to inactive. This is typically set by a profile option because we don't want uh, pending changes to be seen by MRP or the planning system until uh, they've been approved, but we'll make sure that it's inactive and then set the ECO um, approval status to reject. Again, as we mentioned before, it's a common request that people want the requester on the ECO header to be notified if the ECO is rejected. So here's the uh, notification properties, and if we focus on the function name, field, we'll see that that's blank, and therefore there is no voting method set up here. We'll then take a look at the message. This is the standard approval message, um, and you can see in the uh, text body section there's an ampersand change underscore notice. This is one of the fields captured by the get ECO attributes function, so it can be used in the notification and it's very common that people request that the ECO number is also included in the subject line and we'll see that in our customized process. If we then focus here on the performer region 
you can see here that the item attribute uh, type is selected along with the value of approval list name. This is the approval list name field we saw in the ECO header. This uh, is not set up out of the box this way, so this is usually one of the things you have to do to get the standard approval notification uh, to work at all. And again, because there's no voting method, we can see in the node attributes section that there, is, uh, there are no attributes selected.